Hey guys, it's XAMK Epic here, and today I am bringing you a Sony Vegas tutorial. Yes, I'm bringing you another Sony Vegas tutorial. This one is going to be a depth of field tutorial. Now, if you don't know what depth of field is, depth of field is where you want to make an object look like stand out more and you blur the background. So, the best um, idea of this, if you want to get like a real life feel for it, is if you get a pen, like a normal pen like this and then try and focus on the tip of the pen, you'll notice that the, the whole pen becomes really clear and then the background is all faded and all fuzzy. And that's kind of the effect we're going to create on Sony Vegas today. It's a really simple editing tutorial and once you've got it down, it looks really good in cinematics. Um, it's very, it's difficult to notice, but if you know edits, if you look, at, if you look for it in edits, you'll see when someone chooses the depth of field and um, Ansel, um, who's a really, really good editor, he uses depth of field quite a bit in his edits and they look really clean, really sick. So, so you want your original clip and you are going to insert a video track and then you're going to put a clip above that one. Like if you copy the track which you've got selected, so if you're doing this in a montage and you've got like a bunch of clips, you know, so much, Make sure it's only the areas you want to add the depth of field to. Also, if you're going to do some zooming in with the clip, make sure all that is done before you copy the clip, because otherwise you're just going to you'll just save yourself some time, like um, having to do all the like um, zooming in and zooming out. Because um, if it, if you're doing it for like a video, you're going to have to do like each frame separate. So just keep that in mind. So. What I'm going to do is another thing I'll just show you, like a quick tip, which I'll do these in some of my Sony Vegas tutorials, save me doing them all the time. If you ever got it like this and you can't remember the editing parameters, all you need to do is right click, click restore, and it'll just put it right back to the original default settings. Just a quick, like, little nice tip. So, now I am going to, on the top one, you're going to mask the pen so the best way to do this is just what I do is I tend to just drag that screen down drag that screen down and then enlarge the image like this so I can get um, as close up as possible and it does take quite a bit of time doing it like this like getting it right on the edges but it makes the edit look so much smoother and it's best for the depth of field so um, sometimes like the best it's best to record in like 1080p or 720 when you're doing montages because you can really see where the uh, soldier stands out if it's like if he's got like the same background you can see where his legs and his arms are because sometimes if a clip's a bit pixelated it is really difficult to see I know I've had to zoom in and zoom out a few times on some of my previous edits and that's why it's just it's best if you have really nice clips so now I have done a mask around the pen so now the background is free for me to do what um, I want to do and what I want to do is I want to do a depth of field so now you're going to click on Gaussian Blur this one and um, one more thing actually um, I'm going to click on Sharpen and I'm going to go with this default setting which is 0 0.2266 my bad and that's what setting I use to sharpen my clips but if you've got your own setting that's fine but this will just create a nice sharpen around the mask so it'll make this clip look a bit better it probably is a bit too much but it's just what I've decided to use I mean you can just play around with it I always do I always I don't stick to a set one but I tend to use that one whenever I'm doing montages or stuff. So then you're going to go to Gaussian Blur and I'll just show you as just an example if I get an extreme blur and put it on the back. As you see it will just blur the background and it will make the pen stand out. Now obviously this is too much and you can tell it's too much because it doesn't look like because when you look at a pen the whole background doesn't go super blurry like that. So we're going to click out of that and then we are going to go down and I've got a preset one here which I've labeled depth of field. So I'm going to drag this one in instead 
and it will just create like a tiny blur. I mean, it's hardly noticeable. Like, even if I do that, even if I like split the screen down the middle, I'll just try quickly to try and I take it off and put it back on. I, I, it might be a bit difficult to see, but it gives the background just a tiny blur. I mean, you can also you can mess about with it if you want. You can put it to 0 0.5. Nah, that's a bit too much. I'll put it to 0 0.02. And see that will that will blur it a bit more, but I tend to use the 0 0.007 because even though it's hardly recognisable, it just looks a lot better. So as you can see here, like when I add it, you can see that it blurs the background quite a bit. And one other thing I'll show you with this tutorial, I mean I don't know how well this is going to go because it's a bit, I've no, I haven't tested it out yet, I normally do that with my edits. No, before, I mean with my tutorials before I do it. So if I go to the like the um, position stuff, and <laughs> I know that's not the proper name for it, but if I go to this and I put this at let's say 480, and then I put this at 270, then I've got the pen which is kind of um, zoomed in a bit. So now, because this is a whole like thing so I did the zoom in oh actually no I did that at the wrong point didn't I um just bear with me one sec uh so I'm going to restore that so yeah so at the 10 cent at the 10 mark so now the pen's going to zoom in like this so it's going to zoom in the pen but the background's going to stay the same because I should do the same to the other one as well see this is why I said at the start bit that you should do the same one so Again, just um, bear with me. So now that we've got the masking done, the mask should like stay the same as the clip zooms in. It shouldn't move. And what you can do then is you can go to the Gaussian Blur settings. And where it's at 10, if you click these little buttons here, which say animate, these little clock types, it will, you can create a keyframe by pressing this. And then you can drag out the them to the zeros so oh no wait you don't want to do that my bad so we've created a keyframe at 0 0.02 then if you go to where it starts and drag put these to zero or we'll just drag them back whichever way then it can create you can create this really nice effect where as you zoom in like this it's going to be a bit slow but as you zoom in the background will eventually get a bit blurry and it'll get a bit more blurry and a bit more blurry and it'll act like when you're actually looking at a pen it'll actually look pretty nice and it'll just blur in and you see the pen stays the same but the background gets blurry as you zoom in and that's pretty much the depth of field tutorial so that is it leave a like if you have enjoyed also go and check out my previous Sony Vegas tutorial there'll be a link in the outro and also check out any of my other videos, subscribe if you're new, and let me know if you'd like to see any more of these Sony Vegas tutorials, and stay epic guys.